Uh, welcome, Celebration families. Uh, pastor Ryan here from Celebration Church, uh, kids pastor, and uh, along with Josh, just helping our pastor, Pastor Josh, helping lead ministry to the family, for the family. And uh, we're going to jump into a topic that is very immersive, um, you know, pretty just in depth that can be intimidating and just very, uh, our, our kids are growing up immersed in it, surrounded by it. So as parents, we wanted to cover a topic of teens and tech or, you know, the tweens or upper elementary in tech, whatever age they're starting to use technology. Um, and so uh, there's once a month uh, as helping the family and equipping you guys, uh, we do have uh, some resources that we send out every month with a different topic. Uh, this month was the topic of technology. A um, couple months back was smartphones. Um, and so those other resources that you can do some further study, some further reading, uh, even more than this, I'd really recommend diving into that. Uh, I'll put that link in the video description where you're watching this. Click that and they're all free. All great resources uh, for you to dive into this topic more in depth. Um, but as we jump in, we got some uh, a host of great speakers uh, joining us. We have our very own youth pastor, Josh, who's going to give us the highs and lows of tech, uh, the, the technology is best, technology at its worst. Um, then we got uh, an IT guru and a National Guard vet and uh, our own neighbor, uh, Joshua Rice, Aaron Farmington. And then a great couple that's been parenting for decades through changes of technology, uh, Jason and Jennifer Heath as well. So thank you all for joining. They're gonna chime in and give some of their uh, two cents and wisdom and experience, um, because I don't know if you're like me, I love learning from other people's mistakes, so I don't do the same. So, um, well, before I jump in, I just want to give a heart and just, uh, I've read through a lot of those resources uh, that are in that link. And I'm going to give you the Cliff Notes version. I'll go through a couple of just takeaways, some tips. Um, so even if you don't get to it, you at least, I vetted it for you, gave you a, a big snapshot of them. But still, I recommend getting those and uh, reading through them. But uh, some tips overall, and then we'll turn it over to Josh. But when it comes to technology, um, monitors filters on technology are useful uh, but they shouldn't replace relationship all right or relational conversations uh, things will go much smoother much easier when you have that foundation of relationship um, and even just turning off the internet or saying whatever after no none of this after 9 p.m but once again relationship uh, always trumps or surpasses just rules. Um, so really lean into those uh, conversations and times with your uh, students or your teenagers. Um, now, we can't filter our kids' worlds forever though. Uh, part of what Mr. Joshua Rice is gonna cover is some of those tools to help, but we can't filter them forever. So a good uh, end game uh, is not only in addition to implementing rules, and boundaries, but also learn how to navigate that technology responsibly, which Pastor Josh will hit on a little bit. Um, but that's the end goal. Um, we can't protect them or keep it away from them forever. They're gonna come in contact with it. They already have. And our goal is to give them wisdom and discernment in navigating this digital world. Um, another tip I got, I got three more here. If your kids are older, um, and maybe you kind of feel like you're backtracking. You're like, oh shoot, I wish we'd had, a, had this education and learned and had these conversations before uh, they got their phone or before they got this iPad or tablet. Um, but if they are older, um, start, start now having those conversations with them about it um, and even include them. Ask them what they would like to implement. Explain your heart behind it, explain the why, uh, and let them ask questions and express their frustrations You know, during that time as you're giving shape uh, to those parameters of using technology. Um, parents, us too, uh, I'm sure you'll hear this uh, from all of us. Um, Pastor Josh and I are younger parents, so we are also using these times to uh, steal your ideas and help us as our kids get older. Um, but I'm sure Jason and Jennifer are going to attest to this, and Josh as well with older students and kids in his home, but we need to model what it looks like to have a healthy balance of technological and digital use. Um, you know, limiting our own screen time, especially the use of our phones. Um, but also we can model, you know, how we can use it to improve interaction and engagement with, with our peers and with other people maybe uh, that we're trying to pour into and connect with. Um, and then another tip, uh, here we go, two more, and then we'll turn it over to Pastor Josh. But 
going through all those resources, one of the takeaways uh, was this, although teens have a need to develop and practice independence and separation from the parents, uh, it's important to encourage alternative forms of entertainment. You know, let them know that the world is bigger than just their little screen or however big their screen is. Um, and especially that involving physical activity uh, and participation with family members. You know, as much as you can incentivize that, once again, building that relationship, showing them a world that is deeper connection than just a digital connection, um, which I'm sure you all can attest to because even the Zoom call has its limits. Even this recording has, has its limits. Um, but when you have that game night or other entertainment where you're going biking or you're exploring, I don't know, take up bird watching. My wife really got into bird watching and so she uses a bird app. So it's like, it's this cool immersive, we got technology, but we're also out together and my kids know what a chickadee sounds like off the top of their head and I was like wow but um so yeah find other ways of entertainment and that connection uh using time together um video games is intense and very very much uh entertaining and captivating um we won't hit on it as much but a little tip for video games uh, that I came across they're very immersive they're a way to amuse ourselves or even detach so you got to be aware that sometimes it's just a way to detach, get away from what we're feeling or coping with. Um, and whatever value that video game offers, once again, it can't replace that relationship with your team or their growing walk with Christ. Really point them to that, really cultivate that, stir that up in them. Um, that just, you know, that's where they want to dive into and not detach. Um, but really focus on that relationship and that growing with Christ. Uh, video games are there to enjoy responsibly. And uh, we'll hear more about that as we go. But those are just some of the tips I had. I'm gonna turn over to Pastor Josh. He's gonna dive into the topic of um, the highs and lows of technology, the best and worst, um, and what we need to know just going into it uh, as we have maybe um, you know younger uh, middle school ages or older and as they start to use that more often. So Pastor Josh, go ahead and take it away. Yeah, thanks Pastor Ryan. Uh, it's an honor to be here and just kind of give the youth pastor perspective on just tech, um, video games, phones, screen time, movies, all those things. Uh, they can be a beautiful thing. They can be a beautiful tool. It can be something that can bring people together. Um, we come together, there's been small groups. We watch videos on TV. Um, I just think of on a, my phone, how many students have texted me, asked me to pray for them, different things like that. Um, if they didn't have technology, how would they do that? We've done online Bible studies through the Bible app. Obviously the Bible app's an amazing thing. Uh, there's just so many amazing, cool tools about social media. I just, I actually coach football at Prior Lake. And so I get connected uh, to through a lot of the, the football guys. And I've gotten them to come to church through just seeing me post about church on Wednesday. And they said, oh, you guys are doing this this Wednesday. We're going to come check it out. And so it's a beautiful tool to reach. It's a beautiful, beautiful tool to grow students um, in their faith. It's a it's a beautiful tool to influence people in a right way. Uh, but obviously with that, there's a lot of negative effects that I have seen um, in the in the teen world of being a youth pastor, being a teacher for the last eight years or so, and just seeing bullying and different things that they shouldn't be posting or sharing a photo and all that kind of stuff. So obviously that's the fallen world part that is unfortunate about technology. And so I think it really comes down what I, from my perspective, I, and I'm not a parent yet, and Jason and Jennifer are gonna talk about this more of actually walking kids through this as a parent. Uh, but kind of what I tell students or what I would tell parents, my youth pastor advice is, one, it'd be a really fearful and scary thing if we just handed, uh, let's say a 15 year old or a 16 year old a pair of keys to a car and say, hey, you're gonna have no education. Um, good luck, get on the road and start driving. Uh, I, I know a lot of parents would be very fearful about that because one, the automobile is a very dangerous machine. And I would argue that the phone as well, uh, I've been doing some studies again. Um, I've actually been on a fast from social media for, I think it's been six months now. Um, Cause I've just been doing a bunch of studies, Ted talk, watching Ted talks and a bunch of different articles that I've been reading. Uh, but some kids are getting handed a phone at seven years old. And I talked to a lot of kids that maybe their parents kind of just drop them off to church. They're not as um, consistent in their life or whatnot. And they have no idea about the effects of technology on their life. And so 
just some of those lows of technology on average a teen spends about six hours a day using social media or screen media or anything like that um and it screen media and social media actually can become an addiction because it relate releases dopamine in the brain which um is associated with the pleasure part of the brain and so the more the more or when you go see something on a screen or you revealed or you see a cool story you're watching a cool video or a TikTok. Um, it releases some dopamine pleasure. So it's entertainment. And the more you have to be on the, your phone more to continue to release that dopamine. So it can become an addiction. Um, heavy technology users increase their chances of depression by 27%. 59% of teens have reported being bullied or harassed online. Uh, and 87% of teachers have agreed with this fact and stat that cell phones are giving students limited attention spans. Um, and also, the hard thing so kind of talking about do we just completely you know listening to some of these lows do we just completely strip away technology but then it also brings this fact if we strip away technology from our kids from our teens uh 81 percent of teens would re re report that they'd feel disconnected completely they'd feel socially out of it they wouldn't be able to talk about sports or they saw something on social media or the news or this TikTok or this new dance and so it's this really tough like not a perfect black and white answer on what do we do with technology. And so kind of my my action steps, kind of similar to what Pastor Ryan says, is Proverbs 22, 6. It's a famous parent uh, verse, but it says, train them in the way that they should go and they shall not depart from it when they're older. And I think a lot of times as parents, it's really easy to just tell, like settle for communicated knowledge, like don't do this or listen to this. But I think as parents, we need to do Jesus-like ministry and walk alongside them. And what would it look like just as when we hand them the keys and they have to go through permit classes. When I was talking about that car analogy, they have to be trained up. Um, they have to go through tests. Uh, what would it look like? Say, hey, we pay the phone bill. We, you know, we're paying the Netflix Netflix bill. Uh, before you get to you know have this technology and put it in their hands, what does it look like to have them listen to some TED Talks? listen to some studies and have them have some self-revelation because if we truly want behavior modification in our teenagers the best way i've seen it done is jesus-like ministry walking alongside of them and having them come to their own self-revelation not just communicated knowledge but really self-revelation knowledge is what creates behavior modification and so yeah that'd be kind of my action step is i just think we need to do a better job of as parents one modeling the behavior and then two um, finding some good resources to walk alongside of them and say, hey, read this book and give me a one page summary of what do you think and what was revealed to you and finding ways to, to have technology be done really well and do the cool podcast that help them grow in their faith and the Bible app and being able to connect with friends and a GPS to help them know where they how to get to church or all those things. Like there's a beautiful thing behind technology, but it is also a very dangerous field a dangerous machine and if we don't give them proper education um, we're really setting them up for failure and so yeah that's kind of really what i would share is that again there's some great highs there's some great ways to reach there's great ways to grow but there's also some great ways that it can absolutely destroy kids um, so how do we as parents come alongside them and educate them on this and do it with them and walk with them and read the books with them and study with them and help them share it, write down their values and saying, hey, you spending this much time, six hours on your phone, does this help you grow in your values? Your values of God, your values of family, your value of FaceTime with friends. Um, so that's kind of what I would share. That's kind of my youth pastor, little sermon on technology, um, the highs and lows of it. So that's all I got, Pastor Ryan. We can pass it back to you. Yeah, no, that's great, that's great. And in that folder or that link with resources, there is a article from the College of Pediatrics. So the uh, group of child doctors there, uh, American College of Pediatrics, that, that outlays some of the impacts of media use. Um, but it's not just all gloom and doom. Um, Pastor Josh, anyone you know can answer this. What are some ways that you've seen technology um, maybe help bridge some gaps or even be a, a source of ministry between students or to uh, peers? Yeah, where it's been a source of ministry, because we've, obviously there's uh, the Bible app. I, I, I don't know if that's, you know, uncommon to most people, but there's this Bible app and you can start a Bible plan 
um, with like, so we have our small groups at times. We've had them, you know, do this Bible plan. You can all text in the group chat and share what you studied, your your scripture, your soap. So that scripture observation, application prayer. Um, so really there's just a lot of cool apps where you can do some group studies on the Bible and it's kind of bridged that gap. So. Yeah, and even uh, talking through this, I'm like, yeah. Just, so a lot of this is maybe already knowledge, um, and and but even I'm thinking out loud here, just the the next wave of technology, you know, with metaverse and and even just trying to get ahead of the curve in that as parents, because um, even this conversation probably could have had a few years back before COVID even and be more timely. But but yeah, as parents, I'd I'd spur you on to say like try to be at that cutting edge of at least some knowledge of just what, what what's captivating uh, my kids what's what are they intrigued about and uh, just getting knowledge on that so thank you thank you Josh and, and I've had even moments like I'm sure all of you could attest to this and you can nod your heads or thumbs up but uh, even today uh, a, a friend from school of ministry hadn't seen in years because of the phone was able to talk to just randomly called up and you know, it was a great moment of encouragement and just challenge each other to keep the good, keep up the good fight. Um, and so, uh, yeah, definitely have some good uses for it. And just as us as believers, stewarding that uh, uh, well with a good heart. But well, awesome. Well, we're going to jump to our uh, next topic. And don't worry, if any of you have questions, we'll open up a time uh, at the end for any questions, too. So if you do get some, uh, just feel free to jot them down um we'll put them in the chat and i'll read those uh here at the end if we got some time um but i want to pass it on to uh, another very helpful resource and amazing family uh that is jason and jennifer heath uh, they have been so involved at here our home church celebration church uh, have their own ministry as well out at their ranch uh which is amazing and so beneficial it's like so many families that i've heard and talked to and uh um and as it's, it's it's amazing they're like onions in a good way uh as i hear more <laughs> of their story uh i just hear more and more of the layers of experiences that they have and uh they are an onion of wealth and knowledge uh in a good way so i just want to share uh or, or have jason and jennifer share with us uh, maybe just some of the things they get asked a lot because they've done this a lot uh, how many how many kids have you guys raised jason and jennifer how many are you at now well, we're currently at seven and we're in process of adopting our eighth. So, okay. See, kind of have a another layer. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We have, we have Jason's cousin that's, he's actually 34 and he lives in a group home and we got him when he was 13. Um, and then we have, Jason has a son from his first marriage that's 27. 28. Well, he just turned 28. Well, okay. and then we have um, four kids together. Two daughters that are married that are 24 and 20 and then we have um a 17 year old adopted son from columbia that's been home about a year and a half and um and we have a 16 year old daughter and a 13 year old son and we're adopting a girl that's turning 16 next month so we're gonna okay. pick her up sometime this year i don't know when but wow wow so yeah so, so when did this parenting season start for you all? Was it back in the land of eight tracks or were you to cassettes? <laughs> or, uh, yeah, I think there was cassettes probably by then. Cassettes and VHSs, was that a thing? Yeah, VHS. Yeah, yeah. yeah we still have our VHSs. The kids still like to yeah. get our, our home videos that are on the little tiny cassette that you have to put in the VHS to put in the... <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Need to get those converted to a different media form. I remember when, form. when DVDs was a big thing. <laughs> Yeah. So, yep. yep. And, and you've seen the whole emergence of a portable phone from bag phone to then the Palm Pilot, and then that died. And then the smart mm -hmm. <laughs> the flip phones. To... Yeah. Well, yeah, yeah. Our first one was a big, heavy one in a, in a, you know, like a bag, bag that we had to plug into the cigarette lighter in our <laughs> car or something. Is anyone else surprised that the red boxes are still in? <laughs> yeah. yeah. I, know. I don't think they're going to make it much longer. Yeah. <laughs> So uh, I'm kind of an old soul. I'm a, I'm a millennial, uh, but I still kind of live in before smartphone land. And so but the first time, funny story, I went to a red box. I was like, oh, this is awesome. I'm going to go get a DVD. I brought change. I thought it was a <laughs> That's funny. As, as I got there trying to look for the coin slot, I was like, oh, yeah, if I do this, then I don't have to bring the DVD player back. So 
And for all those analog junkies out there, good news, I heard um, last year, two years ago, um, the sale of vinyl records beat the sale of CDs. First wow. time. Wow. Surprised me, yeah. For a long time. The vintage so, is coming back. So. Yeah, there's something, tack, you know, even our generation of uh, kids and students love something that, I, I know my kids, they love flipping through my CDs and my vinyls and it's just there, mm -hmm. touchable, yeah. we'll put it right in, so it's cool, but. That's funny. Uh, yeah. Jason and Jennifer, I'll let you guys take it away and uh, let us let us know if you need help generating questions, but I know you guys got a lot of okay. good content to share, so take it away. Well, the first verse I want to share is Proverbs 27, 23. It's not necessarily talking about kids, but this is kind of a verse that speaks to me about knowing what's going on in your family. But Proverbs 27, 23 says, be diligent to know the condition of your flocks and pay attention to your herds. The it's actually talking about, I mean, it's like the Bible uses a lot of farm analogies and things because that was something really common and we live on a little ranch. So um, we have to check on our horses every day. Like you can't, you can't just let them fend for themselves for several days because somebody could get an injury. It needs to be treated right away. Or if somebody gets sick, it soon spreads to the whole herd. Like you have to be aware of what's going on with them. Um, and you have to be alert. And to, this scripture is really talking about kind of financially, like if you take care of your herds later on, it's gonna provide for you. And, but, but I kind of apply it to, to our family. We need to know what's going on with our kids. I feel like we have an epidemic of <laughs> parents that have no idea what their kids are doing. Like my kid that's in the window right there. <laughs> um, <laughs> They have no idea what their kids are, who their friends are. They don't know what, who they're talking to, what they're talking about. Um, and, you know, we, we hear all the time about kids that even walk into a school and start shooting other kids. And then we'll find out later, oh, they posted this or that, or they've been talking to this or that kid about this or that. And, and the parents are clueless. Like they have no idea that their kid was depressed or, you know, having these thoughts or anything. Um, and so to me, I mean, good parenting, and we are far from perfect, but good parenting is hard work. Like you can't just, it's easier to just not deal with this stuff. It's easier to just go, everybody's doing it. Just, you know, it's such a hassle. It's such a pain to have to have their passwords, to have to check up on stuff. But if we're actually gonna do good parenting, we have to be involved and we have to know what's going on with them. Um, and they aren't going to necessarily like that. Um, but I like the fact, Pastor Ryan, that you talked about, I mean, relationship over rules, because we do have rules, we do have boundaries, um, and those are necessary, but relationship earns you the privilege of enforcing those boundaries um, or them respecting that you've put those in place, I guess. So, so yeah, I just want to add real quick, Pastor Josh brought up a good point about, <laughs> you know, we wouldn't just hand our 15, 16 year old kids, you know, car keys and say, all right, go get them. You know, I mean, we, we train them, we, we teach them, we show them, you know, uh, things that could go wrong. And obviously we, we try to protect our kids, right? Um, and technology is, is, is a great tool, you know, but even a tool can be misused. And, and I would say it's not necessarily stupidity, it's more ignorance when it comes to, you know, kids just don't know because they just don't have life experience yet mm -hmm. to be able to really say, I understand what spending six hours a day on my computer is going to do to me, not only today, but also 10 years from now when I'm married and have my own kids. They don't see that kind of stuff. They don't know the kind of problems that, 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 that you know, they don't know what pornography, they go, oh, this is just great. It feels good, I'm curious, this and that. But they don't understand that exposing yourself to that, and they just say, well, it's just me. But we all know as pastors and older adults, it's not just you. It does affect your future relationships. Your your spouse is now has to compete with all this junk you you, you saw, right? So so it's more of a you, know, you just, they just don't know what they don't know yet. And and I agree with Jennifer. Um, you know, parenting is. I mean, 
I would say to be a good parent, you know, you're not always going to be their best friend, you know, and, and that's okay because we're not supposed to be their best friend. We're supposed to help them, teach them, like you said, the ways they should go. So when they do get off into college, they won't go <laughs> crazy and, and ruin their lives, right? Mm -hmm. So so I agree, technology has provided uh, many, many great aspects, but you know, honestly, mm -hmm. I'll just be honest with you, uh, I wish I lived back in the little house on the prairie days where, <laughs> where life was simpler, and you know, when I get I when I look at my own personal kids and I say, you know, you've already been on screens for two when I'm bored. I'm like, oh, that question or that comment just drives me crazy. I'm like, you need to be okay with being bored. You know, you need to figure out something else to do. I'm like, let's go outside and scoop poop. Let's go out and cut a tree <laughs> down. I mean, I'll I'll you I'll make sure you're not bored anymore. If, if that, you know, let's figure something else out to do. But you know, God likes to talk to us many times when we're silent, when we're quiet, when we're, and kids don't like that. They don't like when they're silent or there's quiet or there's not, they're not being stimulated, right? And that, I think that's a problem. That's part of that ignorance part of thing. They just don't know. They don't know how to just deal with quiet. Mm -hmm. how to meditate, how to pray, really, and, and then actually hear that voice because they're always wanting to be stimulated. So it's a couple comments there. I'll let Jennifer kind of go off on some of her notes that she's doing there. Well, I think that I, th I think the most important thing is the example we set. And I guess one thing I was going to say, if we're going to set limits, which we do try to set limits, and it is very difficult very to hard. enforce them. Um, but. But if we're going to set limits, we had this conversation just a week or two ago. Okay, if we say, okay, you need to get off your tablet now, or you need to be, we need to be willing to do something together. We cannot sit on our phones. We cannot sit on our computer or doing, you know, and not be engaging with them. So, so, or, or just sitting watching a movie every night, like that's not connecting. So we need to find things to do as a family to connect, not just, it. it's not just putting rules in place. Just It's not just saying you can't be on that. You've been on that for two hours. You've been on that for three hours. You need to get off. Okay, then what are they gonna do? Well, we, that's what I mean. Parenting is not convenient. Like if you're gonna do it well, that means I know you're tired, you worked all day or whatever, and you want to sit and watch a movie, but. And I'll just say, that's my favorite thing to do in the evening is sit down with a bowl of popcorn and watch a, and watch a movie. I, that's what I would do every night if Jennifer let me. <laughs> well, that's, that's true, <laughs> but, but we can't, but we can't connect yeah. that way. So we have to play games, do puzzles, yeah. like find other stuff to do together, go do an activity. Um, I will say some basic rules that we have, no phones and no tablets in the bathroom or in the bedroom. I mean, it's just a very, it's kind of just a very basic rule. Um, and, but we're pretty strong on that because, because we want you to only have use of those things in a public area. Like, and I will say that even if they're spending time playing video games or something like that, when they're in the living room and we're all in the living room, they're still, communication there's still connection happening um but when they go in their room and i know many i mean kids that just go in their room and they don't they don't connect with their family they don't connect with anyone they don't even come out to eat we eat meals together like um there's like statistics that show that stuff is just healthy for your family so so that's one of the rules we do um, and we're pretty strict on that. Nobody keeps their, uh, nobody has a screen in their room. Like nobody has a TV, nobody has any of that stuff in their room. And then at night, um, 10 o'clock on weeknights, 11 o'clock on weekends for our older teens, they have to turn in their phones in the kitchen. They charge their phones in the kitchen or the living room, like in a public place. We have the passwords to all, I have the passwords to their Facebook account, their Instagram account. I will say, um, that I don't allow TikTok, I don't allow Snapchat. Those have, and now it's it's frustrating. It, it's like no matter how much you start, try to stay on top of it, you can't 
it feel it feels overwhelming as a parent. It feels like you can't stay on top of what's the next thing. Like, um, but like I don't allow Snapchat and TikTok because we run into problems with those and they can send a photo and then you can't see what they sent like in and you can't pull it back up like so I just we just don't allow it um but our kids have you know a couple of our kids have Facebook and a couple of them have Instagram I have the passwords to those if they change the password then your uh, Snapchat account goes away um I actually have on my phone where I'm signed in to my daughter's Instagram, my Instagram, Haven Acres Instagram, like all at once. Um, and so I can at any time open that on my phone. I don't even have to have their phone and and see messages that they're sending or um, you can look in Snapchat. You can go in there and see what the history's been like, what you can also, they can also give you permission to be a supervisor of their thing. I mean, there's limits on that. You can't see everything, but um, but that's one thing I do. I know maybe I'm a little overzealous on it, but I just I run. We run into too many things. I've tried to tell our kids like, um, obviously there's all these algorithms that figure out what you're interested in, and if you click on the wrong thing one time, they will send you a hundred more of those things. Like it will just keep getting fed to you. So so I like showed our 17 year old son like so this video that just came up i don't want you just to bypass it i want you to click those dots right there and i want you to report this and say that you don't want to see this anymore and so i showed him how to do that and then i checked the history and i look at what's saved what's been liked what's been commented i can't do that every single night i'm not going to catch every single thing you can't put so much weight on yourself like i'm not going to catch everything but there has to be accountability or they it just it does if there's not accountability then then they don't second guess things or they don't think about it twice my goal isn't we do have like uh, a bark app our kids don't have iphones they have androids so we have an app called bark um and you can set the settings for a bunch of different categories, but violence, bullying, sexual content, um, drug use, yeah. I, one time it sent me a notification. It it scans the photos they take, it scans their messages, and it will send you a notification, say this might have a, you know, sexual content or something. It sent me a notification once that my son had a, uh, something about drug use and it was a screenshot or a picture that he took of his of the whiteboard at school in his health class and they were talking about heroin or something like that like so it's pretty sensitive about some stuff but it doesn't catch everything uh, but you can connect their Facebook account to it you can connect their YouTube account to it I have their their Instagram account connected to it um, and their Spotify I have a family Spotify account so that I can turn off explicit content for my kids. It's a family plan, so they can have their own playlist, but um, I can turn off the explicit content, and which does not catch everything, by the way, not even close, because um, a lot of music isn't labeled like explicit, so they'll it'll still sneak through, but Bark will catch it. And I, and I have one kid that's Spanish speaking, and it catches swear words and sexual content and everything in Spanish and English, so. Um, I don't know, though, Josh probably knows more if it, I don't think it really works, or I don't know if it really works for iPhones. There might be a different app to use for iPhones, but this, but Bark is what we use for our Android phones. Um, the one, the, go ahead, yeah. Well, I was just going to say that, you know, we tell our kids, and this is part of being a parent, is you, it, you have to be careful what you fill your mind with. Mm -hmm. um, you know, if you have junk going in, junk's gonna come out, right? So when it comes to their music, when it comes to the videos they watch, when it comes to, you know, games that they're playing, things like that, I mean, we're, we're careful. And, and Jennifer does a great job at monitoring, uh, you know, what they're actually seeing. And if there is something that's questionable, you know, that get, at least gives us the opportunity to talk about it with them now, mm -hmm. right? And, and what that does is if we, if we as parents, maybe we see something that we wouldn't approve of, 
but we actually have a conversation with them and we're not coming down on them. We're actually talking to them, right? Then that, that and, and they, they leave the conversation going, wow, mom and dad actually just talked to me about that versus punishing me or whatever. Then that, that leaves the door open for more open communication down the road, right? As those kids get older. And I think that's, that's where the relationship comes in, right? is is you know we tell our kids we're, we're going to respect you and trust you until, <laughs> until, you give until, us until you give us a reason why not and then we're going to talk about it right and and which well, doesn't mean that we don't make consequences no no, no. We yeah, make that's true but the way i kind of like like it is is a you know because kids want freedom right they want kids kids you know as they, especially as they get old right they want to they want to feel like they're they're making decisions and choices and that's good that's a good thing we want our kids to be make smart intelligent healthy decisions and you know we want to hold on to them right but when they make good choices as parents we need to give them a little space right and they make better continue to make good choices we give them more space they get they feel like they they have freedom right but as soon as they make a bad choice we we clamp back down on them until they rebuild that trust with us, and then we you know we can and eventually they learn. Wow, if I make good choices, there's good consequences from that. But if I make bad choices, boom, there's bad consequences with that. And that helps them to grow and start thinking for themselves. Okay, you know you know. What would Jesus do, or what would my parents approve of? If you want to, you know, be that that case, right? And and I think it helps them down the road. Now they're on their own. Now they're in college. Now they don't have mom and dad tracking everything. But boy, I remember I was a lot happier when I was making good choices, right? And I was making good decisions versus, I mean, let's just face it. I mean, there's statistics out there. If you're filling your mind with junk you're depressed, you're stressed, you have anxiety, you know, you have guilt, you have, you're ashamed of what you're looking at. And that's what we're trying to protect our kids from. And we tell them that. We tell them that. Is, is, is we don't want to keep everything from you. But at the same time, if we can keep you from making major mistakes at a young point in your life, you're going to be much more successful. Mm -hmm. Last thing is that um, I feel like, you know, if, if, if we don't learn to address this, as parents don't learn to address this, you're, we're going to have a generation of kids that are going to lose the art of communication. They are, this verbal communication. They're not going to know how to act <laughs> talking to somebody, you know, face to face or side by side or in a group setting because they feel more comfortable doing this versus actually talking to somebody, right? So that's just another thing that I think is so important, the human relation. Um, again, technology is great, but we always talk about moderation. I don't care if it's watching movies, eating chocolate chip cookies, you know, eating ribs, you know, whatever, it's, it, everything's good within a certain amount of moderation. And our goal is obviously that they learn how to do this on their own. Like, I don't, I don't, I know some parents that just turn the internet off at a certain time or they, they, they put so many filters like the kids can't get on anything. I kind of don't lean towards that because they, they're going to have to make their own choices when they leave our house. And, and so it's not that we don't put any filters, that we don't put any restrictions, but I want them to learn to make the right choices on their own. It's not just us controlling their decisions. Um, and I just want to encourage parents, you have the advantage of the Holy Spirit. So when you don't understand, like when you don't understand all, all the different things, you know, um, you have the Holy Spirit. Like when you get that sense, like I better check up on this is kind of rubbed me wrong, like this friend or this whatever, um, you know, listen to that prompting because I can't tell you how many times I've stumbled upon stuff when I have that like prompting in my spirit, um, the, the Holy Spirit will help you. And and Bark, the other thing about the Bark app is that they do kind of research all the new stuff that's coming out. So so they'll tell you, these are the, um, 
you know, this new app came out, the kids are into the, you know, this new thing. And then they'll kind of tell you what their assessment of that is or how dangerous it could be or what the, you know, pros and cons are of it and stuff like that. So. I just wanted to add something there, Pastor Ryan, um, because I just wanted to compliment the heats. Again, I don't know Jason and Jennifer that well. I've been here for three months, but I've gotten to be around your kids. And they're not always around you guys when I'm around them. And their communication skills are phenomenal. And they've come up to me and introduced themselves. And so anyone that's watching, I just want you guys to know, like their kids are phenomenal and what they're doing must be working uh, because their character is phenomenal and they're just tremendous kids. And so I just wanted to compliment you guys as parents uh, because they're they're a joy to be around. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, so if you happen to come across Jason Jennifer at church or uh, Haven Acres volunteering or, you know, something, uh, an event, pick their brain. They might not be able to be right in there, get their number uh, and uh, follow up with them, circle up. One of the ideas I'm going to steal from you, and then I'll turn it over to Josh here, uh, that I love that Jason Jennifer did when their students started to enter into that relationship dating phase. And when mm-hmm. they got pretty serious, they would set a parameter say, hey, look, if you want this, this accessibility uh to my daughter my son we're going to be on a group chat and, mm-hmm. and uh, students nowadays feel like they're entitled that they can have their own private conversation but you know i just like popping that bubble and say you know what if they're serious about them they're gonna have to learn to graft into our family anyway why not sooner mm-hmm. than later so um, that's right yeah, i did do that yeah one takeaway that and a couple of takers there were a couple of takers so <laughs> yep, yep. so and i, I did i, I like, wanted to say one more thing it is really important because we've had our kids come to us. I want them to learn to come to us when they make mistake. Yeah. And I think that's what Jason was kind of alluding to. Like we want to create a safe environment where when they do come to us and say, I, I, mom, I clicked on this video or I, I put bra in the search bar, you know, <laughs> um, not saying that happened, but just, you know, it's an example. Um, <laughs> then, then we want to be careful how we handle that because I I want to say I'm so proud of you for coming to me with that and that I didn't have to find it out, you know, like that that really speaks a lot of you listening to the Holy Spirit and you having your own convictions about things and then deal with it from there. But um, we have to create safety for those things to happen because we want them to be able to come to us when they make mistakes. Yeah. Well, thank you so much. Thank you so much, Heath. Um, I'm going to turn over to uh, another friend that joins us from our neighboring city and church. Uh, Joshua Rice is joining us from Homestead Church in Farmington. Uh, he did led and uh, you know wrote this content for his own home church and the parents at his church to navigate internet safety. Um, I am not an IT guy, Pastor Josh. We are not IT guys, uh, so we wanted to bring an IT guy. Joshua by day is an IT uh, guru, and then by night a super dad and in that season. So I wanted him to come and just share with us um, that may not know and maybe want to get in the weeds a little bit. We won't get totally in the weeds, but we'll get you. We'll get you to the edge and you can do some of your more uh, own research and diving in. Uh, once again, follow back up with Josh, you know, uh, put a comment in the chat and see if you or there's a way to connect with him. Um, but Josh, go ahead and take, take it away and give us some uh, tips and tricks for navigating the world of technology, internet filtering, and the stuff that you have found. Sure. So, um, hey, everybody, I'm Josh. Um, apologize for my voice. My kids gave me their lovely sickness last night. So a uh, little rough, but no, no worries there. Um, so I do have a slideshow I was going to go through um, to kind of piggyback off of what Jennifer had said. Uh, you know, our, my oldest is 11 at the moment, so we're still in that phase where we do just kind of prevent a lot of things. But as they get older, I agree fully that like there has to be some of that. Uh, they have to live in the world to some extent. You can't; they just can't be protected because they're not going to know what to do uh, when they're out on their own. So, um, part of what I'm going to share is is some tips and tricks. Some of them are free. Some of them are not. Um, I do have Bark listed at my last slide because they do support iOS devices now. Um, I think that just came out this last year. Um, but uh, that is one that I, I suggest to a lot of people because there's it's reasonably priced and um, it does offer a lot of flexibility in how you want to do things. Um, and that's also part of what I want to start with is um, 
uh, what I said at my church was not trying to tell anybody how they should uh, uh, block or monitor their kids' uh, devices. That's, you know, every family has their own their own viewpoints, but I just want to offer, hey, here are things that are free, here are some things that are not, but then you can go out and decide how you would like to leverage those resources for your own family. Let me share this really quick here. You guys see my screen here? Is that a good a yes? Right. Yep, yep. Okay, cool. All right. So <clears throat> title, internet safety, and parental controls. You have to start somewhere. So part of what I'm going to show is there's kind of a set it and forget it. If that's what you want. And then I'll show a couple other things that are a little more in depth. Um, this is me, not really. Um, you know, I just I have a lot of experience in IT. That's what I do. Uh, I'm a father of four children, um, and since I know some of this stuff uh, pretty well, um, you know, I definitely wanted to leverage it in my own home. Uh, how I could kind of monitor my kids. So, <clears throat> first thing, these are not very important, uh, super important, but just so that you understand. Um, your your home router has an ip address right and it's like what it's called it's an address but that's not easy for like we're not going to remember that your ip is whatever it is right and so we have what is called dns which is basically the phone book for the internet and it basically creates facebook.com points to some ip address and that is how the internet works is as humans we remember google.com and facebook.com thus that's what we're going to use so when we put in facebook.com there's a bunch of stuff happening in the background of hey how do i get to facebook.com and so that isn't apparent to you as a user but a lot of how uh monitoring and filtering is done is through dns and thus that's why i want to kind of explain what what this is um for moving forward so the first, <clears throat> the first offering that you can use, and I used to use this uh, a long time ago, and I still leverage it to some extent, is this OpenDNS Family Shield. Uh, this company was actually purchased by a big networking vendor in the IT space. Um, and basically on your router, you can point your router to leverage these DNS servers and it will automatically filter adult content. So any device that is on your home network um it will it will block adult content now the downside to that is every single device to include your iphone you can manually put in the dns servers that you want to use thus your kid could just put something in the, you know 8.8.8.8 .8 is google's uh dns ip address so if they changed it to that this would not protect you right so now for young kids, they're not gonna know how to do that. So you could set this up and then you know, at least for the majority of things that you don't have to worry about adult content popping up on your home network. Um, but that, you know, that's, uh, that there is a limitation is what I'll say. Uh, if we go to the next one, there's a home edition, which is also free. This one actually gives you the ability to, um, to do more um, customized filtering, uh, kind of like a lot of what Jennifer was talking about with Bark, where you could say, hey, I don't want, you know, gambling or uh, violent uh, material, whatever the case may be. Um, you basically can create an account. You can tell it, hey, he here's what I want. You point your DNS servers to these IP addresses. And there's a walkthrough on the website that tells you how to do everything. And then all your viewer DNS traffic forwards there and it will it will filter out based on the categories that you have decided to filter out. And that is a free service. Again, still the limitation of somebody could go in on a device, change the DNS server, and then this kind of becomes a, a moot point. Um, <clears throat> here are some of the categories on the open DNS site. Uh, if you were to um, go in there and, and make some of those, you know, customized modifications. So there's a lot of different things that you can you can pick, um, but you can make it whatever it is that you want. 
Okay, so <clears throat> this is actually what I use at home. There's a called Firewalla, and Firewall is actually the type of device that it is. Um, but um, they offer a variety of of you know makes and models of this device. Um, the the biggest thing that I found what I like with this is that you can manage everything from your phone, whether it's iPhone or Android. My wife and I use this. My wife is not techie at all, and I was able to teach her how to use this. So if she can do it, anybody can do it. Um, I do have uh, a few pictures I'll show you. So why, why this product? So one of the, the big things, there are other products like a, a Circle Router, which I think Disney owns that one. Um, there's a handful of others. What I found with this one, because I've used a lot of the others, uh, is the um, the simplicity and the amount of features that um, and variety of features that you can um, that you can use. So one nice thing is um, it, it is um, it does offer you where like my phone. I was deployed late 2020 through pretty much all of 21, and I could use this device from Maryland, even though my family was here. So my wife, if she was having trouble with something, she'd say, hey, I don't know why this isn't working. Can you just block YouTube? I don't know why it's not working. I could just go in there, boom, boom, block YouTube. And now none of, no devices on our home network can watch YouTube. So I can remotely manage it, which is really nice. Um, so uh, if, if you're in a situation like for me, where my wife just gets frustrated, she can just be like, hey, do, do this and then I can just go on my phone. It doesn't matter. As long as I have uh, internet connectivity or data available, I can manage it remotely. Um, so here's kind of what this looks like. So this is on the phone. This is, uh, these are some screenshots that I took. Um, the thing that I like is um, every device that comes up on your network, you can actually set this up to where it actually blocks every single device that connects to your your home uh, internet and you have to allow it before it'll actually get any internet access. Now, I don't run it that way, but I'm a nerd and I monitor things quite heavily. Um, but you can, uh, this uh, picture over here where it says new device quarantine. As soon as a new device connects to your Wi-Fi, you can get an alert on your phone that says, hey, some new device just got on your network. So for us, we like that because we do have a lot of neighbor kids that come over but we do not let them have their devices in our house because I don't know. Now, our internet is pretty well uh, blocked down, but we kind of just, um, we don't want, don't know what other people have. It just, uh, not that we think that most kids are bad, but we've run into plenty of instances where, you know, things happen and, and uh, stuff comes up that we don't want in our house. And so it's just easier like, nope, like, you can use our devices that are in our house because we know what's on them and what um, what's being blocked on there. Um, so DNS, the, which was what I was talking to you guys earlier. Um, what's nice about this product is it actually, it doesn't matter um, what you set your DNS uh, on your device. It automatically captures that traffic and uses itself as the, the DNS provider for all devices on your network. So no matter what, all the filtering on this device will take place. Doesn't matter what they've set. It it basically kind of acts like a man in the middle is what we would call it. And it um, it doesn't allow the devices on your network. Now the, the downside to this, cell phones, obviously they could turn off the Wi-Fi and now you have a cell phone that has data. You don't have any control over that. And that is where Bark would come in that you would want something an app installed on the phone that now has the ability to manage that phone remotely for you um one of the um the things on here the big ones is you literally can come in here and hit this button internet and you hit it and it in this particular this is on my wife's macbook pro but it would just block the internet on that device just off and it's just a, a touch your finger on your phone um a lot of these other ones um, we pretty much have on the majority of the time, but not always. Um, the the big ones over here, YouTube is almost always off in our house just because the kids want to watch YouTube incessantly. And so we, we do offer them uh, 
ways to earn time to watch YouTube, but it's always, you know, very limited and um, we can control that. In this next screenshot, which is nice, is you can create rules. Uh, so this is for our, our tablets group. So I created a group called tablets and it's all of like iPods, iPads, whatever tablet they may have belongs to this group. And so we have a rule at 10 p.m. to 7 a.m. Internet automatically is is cut off. It doesn't matter whatever they do with it. It's just cut off. Um, we have that set up partially because we found, you know, my son, he would put the his uh, tablet on the charger and we're like, oh, good. And then I would be uh, looking on my phone the next day and you're like, oh, that's weird. Why was there, there's a little graph I think you can see on this last picture. It'll actually show you the amount of traffic that's happening at different times. Well, I noticed there was a little blip that was like, you know, late at night. And so then I went and asked, say, hey, did you, uh, did you, were, did you go grab your tablet? And then, you know, he was on, I said, yeah, okay, I did. And it was, but like, that's partially why I set up the rule as one. I don't want to have to worry about it. Um, but I agree with Jennifer's point. Like he is getting to that age where we, um, um, it would probably be beneficial to, to allow him to make you know, break that rule because then, you know, like that particular time, like he lost it for the device for a couple of days. Um, and uh, we have noticed from personal experience that he seems to do much better learning by experience. And he doesn't, it's not that he never makes mistakes again, but he definitely learns from those mistakes. Uh, and just blocking it doesn't allow him that opportunity to have that real concept of consequence so um but this is still a great tool that you could leverage again um to uh, make your life a little bit easier there are a whole bunch of other features here that i'm not going to get get into um the the main ones being here that this just provides a really nice avenue of if you want to block tiktok you could block tiktok on your entire network and nobody can ever use tiktok on your home uh, network um so a lot of these things just for modern day stuff, social media, it's a pretty easy way to, to prevent it. But that does not necessarily help you, I would say, in the, the later years uh, where some uh, personal responsibility needs to take place. Um, and then this last, oh, so in here, I was gonna show, there were, there were the other nice thing is you can create a schedule for whatever you want. So we actually have a schedule for one of my daughters that uh, there's like two days a week for an hour where that's kind of her designated YouTube time. And so I just set up a rule where, hey, so your time to use YouTube is during that time. If you choose to go do something else, well, you're out of luck. Like you can, you know, if the kids are playing outside. I would hope you would go play outside. But if you're not well like you're not getting that time later because we're specifying like just kind of a hard set rule we have with her um but uh and then lastly here's a couple links for in regards to cell phones i would recommend bark pretty much out of all of these i think it's the best bang for your buck um money wise as well as feature set wise um but um you know I wouldn't say that you could go wrong with any of these, but I think Bark is pretty spot on. Any questions? I have one question. I don't know if you know about Bark. The one thing that I'm not sure of is how well it monitors the videos like on YouTube, because I don't ever get notifications, even though I have the YouTube account connected. Like it, it get, I get notifications of text messages if they think there's bullying or something, or I get notifications, like I said, from photos or music, but I'm not sure how good it does, like when they're scrolling Facebook or Instagram and they're watching all these reels and stuff. And is there any way to do that or no? So I'm not 100% sure. Part, I mean, the, the downside of uh, Apple products is they are a closed product, thus, they're much harder to do monitoring because by design, they're trying to make it very, very hard. 
So, um, you know, the I would say they're they are better in the sense that they're more than likely a more secure product than an Android device in that there's a lot more limitations and, and roadblocks put in the way, but that's a double edged sword as well. So um, I wouldn't be surprised if, if there are still, if you have problems like that, just because um, not only is YouTube in it of itself really hard to monitor just because of the way they've architected it, uh, you add that on top of the fact that Apple then makes it very hard for you to monitor as well. So um, I'm not 100% sure, but I, it's it's probably going to remain that way for a while, unfortunately. Josh, I have a question. So you're you're in the National Guard. Have you found yeah. or invented or can you hijack a tool just to disable all data in our house? Is what I'm <laughs> Well, the well, the best you could build a Faraday cage, but that would get really, really expensive. Um, <laughs> I I actually know somebody that uh, in Maryland that that has a Faraday cage in his basement because wacko. But um, he, uh, yeah, that's about the only way that you could kill all wireless signals coming in. <laughs> Well, that, that was helpful, Josh. I, I've never dived into that world, so it sounds like open, open DS, open DNS. Yep. Good one, Firewalla. Yep. Uh, some of those cell phone ones, Bark. Uh, yep. that, that I saw a Norton one. Can Can you put those in the chat too? Just type those yep. real quick, and yep. uh, then we got them. But well, very good. We're, I'm gonna I'm gonna wrap it up. But thank you so much, Josh, and uh, and uh, Jason, Jennifer, and Pastor Josh as well. So overall, I know this. It can be overwhelming, but take away to encourage you as daunting as technology is and the internet and this whole world and the content. Um, just remember God is infinitely greater. All right. That he loves your kids uh, with reckless abandon. He loves them more than we could. And he longs for their hearts uh, to truly love and worship him as well. And, and this is really encouraging. He's working just as tirelessly as we are through you. Uh, through others um, to make that a reality. So once again, as Miss Jennifer said, lean on the Holy Spirit, lean on God's grace uh, to help you where you come up short, uh, find those people. Um, please do reach out to any one of our, our panel here, uh, Pastor Josh, myself, Jason, Jennifer, Joshua Rice at Homestead uh, Church in Farmington. Uh, great resources uh, already. Um, Speaking of resources, don't forget, I'll put in the video description again and here, here in this chat, some free resources to you that have been so helpful for me uh, as I, I march into this season of younger, uh, older kids and technology use. Um, and I get a lot of these from Owen oh, in that free resource uh, link, the great stuff as far as boredom. You know, Jason talked about boredom and how to navigate boredom. And that can be one of the best things and the worst things. And so I loved their idea of, uh, you know, if you're going to take away something, supplant it with something else. Um, and so it, it talks about in that resource folder of boredom. It talks about how to navigate video games, a parent's guide to video games, um, many other things, uh, media use, uh, the impact of it, internet monitoring. There's also an article that kind of dives into what Josh uh, was talking about with different tools to help you if you want to monitor um, to whatever extent your uh, family has agreed upon. Um, so check that out. And a lot of these, uh, my last plug for just parents navigating every season, because uh, I know we do this monthly and we have a resource every month, but parenting goes at a different speed. And you might be in relationships one, uh, one week and then you're into technology another week and then you're in another conversation about whatever topic. Um, so I, I really leaned on a resource called axis.org, uh, A-X-I-S.org. Um, as part of Celebration Church, all of our attendees get a free login, but they just reformatted their website. So you don't even need an organization login. A lot of their content now they've made totally free. So access.org covers so much stuff that uh, has been really helpful. You can even do uh, an email subscription that keeps you up to date with like the, the latest lingo, um, the latest tech that students are encountering, um, and, and a lot of things that students encounter and kids encounter. Uh, it keeps you up to date. My mother-in-law uh, swears by it and got me um, using it too. So awesome. Well, hey, I'll end with this as it warms up outside, hopefully, hopefully, and uh, spring is coming and the birds and bees uh, start coming out. 
be on the lookout. Our next resource in April is The Talk, all right? So I'll have some resources for you guys and parents. Um, please put it to good use and uh, we'll enjoy seeing you guys next time. Thank you so much. See you again.